open meeting. And the first order of business is public comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak during public? Nicole Bay. Please put your name in the chat um, and we'll call on you. Um, first person up is Nicole Bay. Good evening, I'm Nicole Bay. I'm the STEM coach over at Barrows and also the parent of a fabulous fourth grader at North Wyndham. Um, I just wanted during public comment to acknowledge the, um, the families and students who have participated in the invention convention this year. Um, normally it is um, a requirement of students at Barrows, but this year it was actually an option. Um, we had 12 students who moved on to the state level and four of those students moved on to the national level. And what makes that a, an extreme accomplishment this year is that there were only 65 students in the entire United States who moved to the national level and four of them came from Barrows. So I just wanted to publicly congratulate the families and students. Um, and I'm just so proud of the work that they did this year and it was completely optional. Thank you. Wow, that's impressive. We should make sure that gets blasted out all over the place. You hear that, Laura? <laughs> um, is there anybody else who would like to speak during public comment? Okay, hearing or seeing nobody else. Um, I would entertain a motion for approval of the April 21st, 2021 minutes. So moved, Katina. Second. <clears throat> Seconded by Jaime, moved by Katina. Is there anybody who would like to make any adjustments or comments on those minutes? Okay, um, hearing none, um, Janet, would you please take a roll call vote? Dr. Caban Owen. Aye. Dr. Gallucci. Aye. Dr. Gomez. Aye. Ms. Aye. Abstain. Mr. O'Neill. Aye. Uh, Ms. Aye. Lambert, I see you came on. Ms. Lambert. Abstain. Thank you. I had some computer issues. I don't believe Mr. Doyle or Ms. Haney are on the or Ms. Ray are on the call. No, I don't. Is, are Mark or, or Paula or Ilda on this meeting? Nope. I guess not then. Okay. I am on the call. Oh, you are? Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Do you want to vote on the minutes? Uh, yes, I will vote yay. Thank you. Are you all set, Janet, with that then? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so now we're on to reports from the superintendent. And I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Youngberg. Good evening, everyone. I'm going to share my screen to start us off with some celebrations. And we definitely will follow up on the story of the four Barrow students reaching nationals. That's, that's exciting stuff. All right, hopefully everyone can see my screen. Yes. Great. Okay, the first uh, celebration is comes from Wyndham High School. The artwork of Wyndham High School students, Victor Casabal, Ainsley Dupuy, Andrea Casabal, Calixto, and Janelise Negron Rodriguez were awarded finalist status in the Congressional Arts Competition sponsored by the Congressional Arts Caucus created to recognize and honor the creative talents of young Americans. Under the leadership of their art teacher, Marissa Copley, the students participated in a live online event where they spoke about their work. Congratulations to these outstanding artists. I, I see claps, that's awesome. Moving on to some more artists at Wyndham Middle School. Uh, Wyndham Middle School teacher Kathleen Brillian 
organized a virtual 20, 2021 art show to exhibit her students' amazing work. We were impressed by our students' resilience and their ability to create masterpieces despite the many challenges that this year posed. So celebrating all the artists who were involved in that work at Wyndham Middle School. Uh, at C.H. Barrel STEM Academy, uh, the behavior tutor Lisa Giglio received the Roger LaFrancois Senior Middle School Girls Sportsmanship Award chosen out of 25 schools by the Eastern Connecticut Basketball Officials Association. Congratulations to Ms. Giglio for being an inspiration to her students. And the pictures on the next slide uh, show us our ap appreciation for teachers during the week of May 3rd through the 7th as well as the school lunch hero day for our food services workers. Um, the district is grateful for the ways in which our teachers quickly made significant changes to their use of technology, delivery of instruction, classroom environment expectations, and their focus on social emotional learning. And our food services team has also demonstrated great flexibility and dedication and has served more than 287,000 meals between July 1, 2020 and April 29, 2021. We are proud of all of all the things they've done this year. It has been a crazy year, so we're just very grateful. And today, um, they're probably on the call tonight, but today is National School Nurses Day. So another celebration for a team that pulled together um, <laughs> to make things go smoothly during a very crazy year. Our family liaisons and before and after school staff supported the task force to prevent child abuse and neglect at their event, Take Time to Play. In a year with limited in-person community outreach opportunities, the district was very happy to take the opportunity to remind the community that in Wyndham, they are all out of our children. So thank you to that group that took part in that worthy event. Uh, just letting the board know that Wyndham Public Schools collected uh, 32, I'm sorry, $3,246.70 for the United Way campaign, Give Love Back which is uh, a really good thing considering it was COVID. Um, we made a goal of getting a dollar per student uh, and we, we surpassed that goal. So happy about that. And our goal uh, to keep Wyndham safe from COVID, uh, we partnered with, Har with Hartford Healthcare and our family liaisons were a part of two vaccination clinics in town um, to support the students who are 16 years and older and their family members Again, the school nursing team was involved as were the family liaisons. So very happy about those celebrations. And that's that. All right, so that's our celebrations. And like I said, when I started, we will jump on uh, getting us more information about the students who made it to nationals. And I always love hearing about the invention conventions anyway, because they're usually pretty creative stuff that you say, wow, how did a kid think of that? Mm -hmm. So more to come on that. You want me just to keep going on the agenda? Does anybody have any questions or comments? Okay, thank you for that great news. I actually have continuation for agenda items two and three, I have more great news. So as you know, from uh, earlier on this year, I appointed uh, two different assistant principals, one at North Wyndham uh, Elementary School, Amy Majak, and the other at Wyndham High School, Fatima Pearson. Uh, and I'm happy to report to the board that they will be appointed, both of them in their respective schools will be appointed moving forward for the 21-22 school year. Um, they did a great job, both of them this year, in uh, being a part of a, of a well-functioning leadership team and helping to support positive climate and culture in their buildings. Um, and given all that's gone on this year, you can make it through COVID the way they did they need to show up again for next school year. So congratulations to Amy Majek, who I see on the screen, and to Fatima Pearson. We're glad you're sticking around. Can I just give a shout out? Sure. I just want to shout out Liz and the entire staff of North Windham School. Um, I've been able to see firsthand just what a group of professionals, how dedicated they truly are. And they work tirelessly to help ensure that all their students succeed. It's my privilege and um, I'm very, I feel very fortunate to be working with all of them. So thank you all of them and all of you. Thank you for stepping up. We, we very much appreciate it. 
And it's nice to see Liz smiling from ear to ear about this. <laughs> Fatima, do you want to jump in before we move on? Yeah, if I can thank uh, the high school team. I am so happy to belong to the high school team. Uh, Pam, Pat, they've been great mentors. And thank you for everything you've done this year for me and how much I've learned. Thank you all. Good news all around. Thank there. you. All and right. I see that, Pam there smiling from ear yes. to ear also. So that's everybody's good. very happy. They were both principals were involved in the decision um, and happy to make it. So uh, we're we're in good shape. The whole idea of teamwork and sustainability, these are just examples of that. So all right, number four on the agenda is an update on the end of year events uh, in the board packet. Everyone received a chart that Janet was nice enough to put together. I will let you know that there's one minor change on that chart, and that is the time of Wyndham Middle School's um, promotion ceremony is actually it's been adjusted uh, to 430 PM. Uh, and that adjustment was made because we learned that uh, Wyndham Tech had reached out to all of the local middle and high schools um, earlier on before we chose this date, the date of June 11th, uh, trying not to create a conflict. Uh, and the message was not delivered uh, in a timely manner to the principal when he chose this date. So we've made an adjustment so that there's no conflict with the Wyndham Tech uh, graduation ceremony. So again, June 11th on the Wyndham Middle School field, the promotion ceremony will start at 4.30 p.m., not 6.30. Everything else on there is accurate. I don't know if there's any questions or if the board members need any more information. Aaron Berg, if I may say, Lynn, if I may say, I think that's fabulous because there have been so many times in the past I've heard from parents that one school's graduation is at the same time. They have different kids graduating or siblings or um, cousins, aunts, whatever, you know, all graduating at the same time and they have to make choices. And so the fact that tech school took the initiative to reach out and that we responded so positively. That's impressive to me. Thank you. Uh, um, we, if the message had been delivered in a timely manner, the way it was designed, we wouldn't even have had the conflict. But after we learned the way it all went down, we said, we have to do something. They, they went out of their way to make sure there wasn't a conflict. So that was our adjustment to the time. Uh, let's see. So no other questions on that. Any questions, board members? Okay. Any questions on the WECC air conditioning units? You had information in your packet about that. Anybody have any questions on that? Moving right along tonight. All right, any questions on the first reading of the wellness school wellness policy? No, it looked pretty clear to me. I don't see any board members indicating they have any questions. This is the first reading, so we will take action at our next uh, meeting, but uh, right okay. now. Okay. All right, let me pull up this, my screen, excuse me, share my screen and get you the COVID update. Give me one second. I'll be so happy when this isn't a part of our regular agendas. Oh, <laughs> you and me both. All right, hopefully everybody can see the screen. Everyone knows by now we do this every two weeks. You know what the purpose of the update is. Uh, the first update I have for you is just to let you know that we're continuing our partnership with Hartford Healthcare. Uh, while they won't be offering any more closed clinics, and that's a good thing, the reason why they're not doing any more closed clinics is there's enough vaccine to go around. And there's many locations where people can get the vaccine. But we are moving to the next phase um, they have provided us, uh, starting as early as tomorrow, um, the opportunity for our 12 to 15 year old students to get vaccinated. Actually, it sounds like there's going to be vaccine available, not only at Hartford Healthcare, but any of our local pharmacies all throughout the state. Um, so, but we're continuing our partnership there uh, and anyone uh, in the district who, get, who would like to have their 12 to 15 year old uh, children vaccinated, they must be present at the vaccination and we will be, the district will be sending out information about 
what Hartford Healthcare is offering. It's all walk-in, no appointment necessary. Um, that's the way they're doing it from, for this next phase. So good to know we still have our partners in the, on the healthcare side. Uh, this is the usual check-in. Uh, we are currently have a case rate of 20.5, which puts Wyndham at 22nd out of 169 school districts. We are still not in the top 10. Um, and you can see that uh, many of the case rates across the state have dropped since our last report on April 21st. Um, so things are looking better. And if you look at the, the colorful chart that the, that the state puts out for us every couple of weeks, we have far more uh, towns across the state coming out of the red and moving into orange and even gray at this point. So um, hope to see Wyndham get to the gray soon. This is our data uh, to date as of 315 this afternoon. We have one staff member in quarantine. We have 15 students in quarantine or isolation. Um, we've had a total of 75 positive staff cases since September and a total of 336 positive student cases, which happens to be the exact same percentage, 10.4% of our total enrollment there. And our amazing COVID warrior school nurses have resolved 388 staff cases that, you know, that's all the quarantines and isolations and all that and 1,055 student cases. So <laughs> they are an amazing team. Uh, uh, we're happy to report that since May 1st, we have only had one positive case reported. So we've seen a drastic decline in positive cases and it's, it's a really good thing. Um, we're spending our energy on, in other places and not on COVID. So that's a really good thing. I hope it continues. We have had no new compliance COVID compliance feedback to offer, still the same as it was last time we reported out. Uh, this is just uh, a quick calendar check-in. We're at the 12th here, uh, early dismissal, the last one. Then we have four weeks of regular school days and an early dismissal for the end of the school year. We have asked the families to make a decision between May 17th and June 16th to choose either full in-person or full virtual. Uh, we have many students that are sort of going in between on a day-to-day -day basis and it's very disruptive. So we've asked them to make a choice uh, for the last month or so of school. I hope that's not gonna be a problem. It's something that most of the districts have been doing because it is highly disruptive to have kids showing up on some days and then showing up virtual on other days. And we just need to know what to expect in the classrooms. Uh, as the board members know, uh, the state put out interim guidance about the 2021 school year and the fact that they will not be mandating school systems offer uh, full remote learning. And I know there's a piece of our, there's a possible action item on our agenda tonight to discuss that. Uh, the district obviously wants to continue to use technology to support student acceleration. We know it can be highly engaging to students. It can help with mastering standards and credit attainment. We know that there may be an opportunity to use technology on snow days or if there's quarantines moving forward in the future or some other potential emergency. Um, but the district is not going to be required to offer full remote learning next year. And I think that's a really good thing. Um, again, the teachers this year did both the full, the in-person learning and the virtual learning simultaneously. And it was, it's too much. It's definitely too much to continue. And I'm happy that the state has made this determination. Uh, on Monday morning, the superintendents went to a webinar about the American Rescue Plan, the ESSER three funds. Uh, on the screen are the buckets, uh, the priorities that the state is telling us all the monies must be spent within. They've, the, the, first, the top four buckets were exactly or very similar to what was requested in ESSER two, and then they added an additional bucket at the bottom there. So the, these are all the places where the ESSER three funds need to be spent. And I'm just gonna give the board a little more information about this. There'll be much more coming, um, but this is the timeline that they provided. So next week, we are gonna receive from the State Department of Ed the assurance of the money that's coming to the district. We have to do um, something on our end to accept the, those funds. Uh, and at that point on May 24th, the application will open up. Um, the State Department of Ed actually has an application they have to submit to the US Department of Education. Um, and so the district is doing work on this as is the State Department and we're all sort of gonna come together at some point later in the summer. Um, the district must produce a safe return to in-person instruction plan by June 23rd. 
um, and it needs to be revised every six months straight through September of 2023. Uh, so you'll be hearing much more about this from me. Um, we also have to work to complete the application for ESSER 3. And in that application, we have to provide proof that we've given opportunity for the, for the public, for all of our stakeholders, which includes the board uh, and all of our parents and community members and partners. Um, we have to give the opportunity for all of our stakeholders to offer their input, provide feedback on how they believe the money should be spent within the parameters of the, of the, uh, of the grant. So I will be providing a plan shortly about how we're going to go about doing that. We're going to do multiple, um, we're going to, we're going to provide multiple ways for people to offer that feedback, some virtual, some in person, some through a digital database. Um, so that we have proof that we've asked and listened to what people think uh, would be a good use of the monies. And all of the ESSER 3 funds, when we get them, will need to be spent by September 30th of 2024. So much more on ESSER 3 to come, but I wanted to give you a quick little update. I don't know if there's any questions about COVID or anything that's going on um, that I can help you with. Do board members have any questions? That's a lot of work around the ESSER um, money. It's a lot of work. It, it, I mean, it's a lot of money, so we have to be grateful for the opportunity, but it, there's a lot they're expecting from the school system, mm -hmm. all of the school systems. Okay, it's a quiet group tonight. I don't see any questions. Um, all right, it's all yours. Okay, thank you very much for that report. And Tracy, I agree with you. It'll be nice when we don't have to get uh, COVID reports, but that one was about the shortest one we've, we've gotten. So we maybe are easing into a different time on that. Um, and just now we're dealing with all the aftermath of all, all that. Um, so, um, we're on to committee reports. Does Mark, does the finance and audit have anything to report? Well, we didn't, we'll meet next Wednesday. We didn't meet okay. I <laughs> before this. So our meeting is next Wednesday. Okay. Next Wednesday. Uh, so we'll expect a report at our next meeting, yes. uh, the next board meeting. Uh, school planning and design. Tracy, anything to report to us? Yeah, we met last week. Um, Myself, Dr. Youngberg, Don, Mary, and Brendan was there. Um, we had a facilities update. The ventilation systems are working well. Um, the high school ventilators need a little bit of tweaking, but the plumbing needs to be shut off. So as long as there's students in the building, that's not going to happen, um, like for an extended period of time. Um, Barrows, the solar project is still in draft form, and Dr. Youngberg is going to touch base with the attorney for that. Um, the well water bids, they are out. I think the bids closed this Friday afternoon, according to Dawn. And so we are waiting on that for um, mediation of the smell in the well water in the two Wyndham schools. Um, the roof replacement, the application for the roof replacement needs to be to the state by yesterday. And I didn't follow up on that to see if it happened before tonight's meeting, but I'm sure that Dawn and Dr. Youngberg got it in in time. Um, the underground storage tank buildings, the applications were due by yesterday, so that's good. Um, facilities review report, um, the survey is out. There were a bunch of questions that we're going to need to answer no to. Every school district is supposed to fill them out yearly. Not every school district has been quite so compliant and the state is starting to crack down on that. So all school districts are filling it out. Um, Dr. Youngberg reached out to Michelle Dixon and she said, don't worry about your nose, there are a lot of knows on different things. Um, it covers all the facilities and all the buildings and she has to do an individual report on each. So this is like a leaping off point for that project, for that program now, for that report. And every year we hope to see, once we refile the report every year, we get a better grade on it. Um, start off you know, where we can and then go from there. And it'll be a good way, I think, for us to justify to the town some of our building projects and our construction needs um, going forward is to be able to say, you know, we filed this with the state and for five years now we've said we need to have this done or something and, you know, they're going to start taking notice of this. So maybe getting ahead of our construction projects going forward. Um, and new business, we are working on emptying Kramer out. Um, Dr. Youngberg has engaged 
our favorite Mr. Bill Chafin to come in and give us a hand on cleaning out what was left. Everything that was absolutely necessary or nearly everything that was absolutely necessary is out of the Kramer building right now. But as many of you know by the paper and the news reports, it is being sold to the state of Connecticut for Eastern's use um, coming up in the very near future. So we are in a little bit more of an imminent need to get out of that building. So that's on the new business horizon going forward. Mary, Brendan, can you think, Dawn, can you think of anything I missed? I just wanted to let you know that I did sign the solar agreement um, for North Window. It was signed. Okay. And, and, the, and one is the one that's in process. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And, and you did uh, mention um, Ms. Dixon um, and Tracy, you may want to explain who she is because some people listening to your report may not know. Oh, she's the, I don't know what her official title is, but she works for the State Department of Ed in construction grants. And she is the one that oversees um, finishing out all of the audits and stuff like that on building grants and stuff that have been done and asking all the financial questions going forward on all the projects we have going on. So she's kind of the oversight person there um, for the State Department of Ed. And the construction. Thank you, for, thank you for clarifying that. I just wanted to make sure people, nope. when you said, when you said Dr. Youngberg talked to her, she's a very key person for us to have a, we have a good back and forth relationship with her. We do. Very helpful. And, um, and she made it very clear that Dr. Youngberg is in charge of all of the construction grants and everything that goes on in the building. She's the final sign off person. Um, and so keeping a good relationship is important. So the fact that Dr. Youngberg took the initiative to reach out and make sure that, you know, all the no's that we might be filling in, there are some yeses, they're not all no's, but all the no's we might not, we might be filling in aren't going to be punitive to us right now. Um, and also the high school renovation, um, we are going forward. We have submitted everything to the state meeting two weeks ago, I think. And um, it was a very lengthy meeting. Um, and um, we took a break for lunch and then went back. It was that lengthy. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Younger and I were like, um, got other stuff to do, how much longer? <laughs> but um, that is going well. We have submitted all but one form, which we are pending from the Department of Health and that should be submitted this week. And then they should be ready, hopefully without too many questions for us to sign off to start collecting bids and collecting um, stuff like that so that way as soon as the state legislature approves our funds in June or July, fingers crossed, um, we can go and sign those bid contracts and start construction right away. Right. It's not part of school planning and design, but it kind of comes yeah. in a big umbrella. Right. It all dovetails. Right. Thank you for that report. Does anybody have any questions or additions? Okay, thank you. Good thing you are so on top of it. Thank you. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, so next committee, is there anything to report on policy, Ilda? No, we haven't met since our last board meeting. Okay. We will be meeting on the on the 27th, May 27th. So. Oh, we'll you are meeting on the 27th? What time is your meeting? Is it four o'clock or something? What, what time do you usually meet? Four o'clock. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, executive committee, we had a meeting earlier this evening. Um, we're moving forward with Dr. Youngberg's evaluation. Um, we will be meeting again at 5.30 p.m. on the 26th of May to um, go into executive session with Dr. Youngberg um, and talk about um, progress that's been made this year. And uh, earlier this evening, we uh, pending, uh, you know, checking with Janet about the schedule. We will have a special meeting on Thursday, the 27th at 5.30 p.m. Um, to discuss uh, uh, you know, to go into executive session and finalize uh, the feedback that we would like to give to Dr. Youngberg. Um, and then um, uh, folks will meet with her in June to do that feedback date yet to be determined, um, but not too long thereafter, we will be meeting with Dr. Youngberg and um, work on the contract. Um, so that's where we are with that. Any questions?
Okay. Um, I just do want to make sure that board members do know um, that, that, that there is that meeting with Dr. Youngberg on the 26th at 5.30 and a meeting on the 27th at 5.30. <clears throat> so please mark your calendars accordingly. Um, I also just can't resist mentioning that the budget referendum is coming up on uh, the 18th, which is next Tuesday from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. People can vote in person and uh, absentee ballots are available in uh, if people request them and or go down to town hall. Um, and I do want to um, just highlight that there is um, a good, clear information about the Board of Ed budget on the Board of Ed website. And if anybody has any questions or the members of the public want to know more about the budget, we should all be referring them to that site so they can get that information. Um, encourage everybody to go vote, please. Anybody have any questions about that or comments? Okay. Um, and then now the last committee report is ad hoc elementary school consolidation committee. Paul, is there anything you'd like to share with us? Paula? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, it's been a crazy day. <laughs> um, our committee met on uh, April 27th and started out with um, Bob Roach from Friars uh, just giving us um, the uh, notification that he'll be verifying square footage. Uh, he'll be doing some walkthroughs of all the schools. Um, he was going to, I believe, uh, start arranging that with Dawn um, and just being able to compare what he's seeing now to what the former school assessment looked like uh, with regard to capacity and square footage. Um, Mr. Weathers gave us a report on class size. Uh, we were told, again, that there was no policy on class size, but that you, Dr. Youngberg was going to be meeting uh, with a committee to uh, look at establishing some guidelines uh, with the possibility of K through two having an 18 student max, um, grade three, a 22 max, and grades four to five, 22 max, but that's going to be discussion with um, her committee. The, we also talked about Dewey visitations, and at this point, the members of the committee should have received an email uh, from Janet, uh, through Janet from me, uh, that perhaps we could arrange meetings at four o'clock in the afternoon. I have been in the process of getting in touch with principals of the elementary schools, and uh, I will also seek the middle school to arrange walkthroughs. Um, there were many questions regarding class size. Is a class size in one school basically going to um, manage the same amount of students in a class in another school? So those are the kind of things we want to look at. Uh, the condition of portables and the need for portables. Um, someone asked the question, is it still uh, possible for the fifth grade to return to the middle school? Um, so these are all questions that we're going to be looking at. Um, I believe that next Tuesday, if our principal at North Windham School is still uh, available, we're looking at our first visitation next Tuesday um, at four o'clock at North Windham School. Um, she had told us during the meeting that any type of increasing the size of the um, of her school could impact bus access, parking, and those outdoor kinds of arrangements there. Um, and I think that's about it, unless anyone has any questions. Does anybody on the board have any questions? 
I have a question, Paula. Sure. Um, if there are people who are not on the committee, but are board of ed members who would like to go to those school visits, are they able to do so? Um, I will make sure that we post the visitation times. Um, you know, I don't want to make it on, you know, on, on gainly for the principals, but I'm sure we're not going to be a very large crowd. So I would think it would be perfectly fine. Paula, I know you, I don't know if you can see us, but Liz, uh, principal at North Wind Windham is on the call. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't. No, I'm in okay, transit. So, and she's so. shaking her head. Yes, it looks like she's on board for the four o'clock on Tuesday. So yes, I got a thumbs up. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much. So um, um, and I, if, if board members want to join you, um, should they be getting in touch with with you or Janet, who should they be getting in touch with to let them know? So if we, if, um, it gets, if the crowd gets too big, we know, we know ahead of time. Well, how about if I, whenever I set up a meeting, I will let Janet know. And if Janet doesn't okay. mind, if people go through her, um, then we can kind of get an idea of, of who additionally is going to be going. Would that, Would that Janet be all right? Gave a, Janet gave a thumbs up to that. Um, so she's bless fine. her heart. Thank you. All Janet. right. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. And our next meeting um, at this point in time is scheduled for May 25th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for all mm -hmm. that work that's going on. Well, we got to get this done. Okay, anybody want to anything about any of the committee reports before we move on. Okay, uh, so the, the next item is an action item um, i'd entertain a motion on possible action regarding in implementation of an in person learning program and then we'll have to read the actual motion out loud because there's been a suggested change to it since it was. Yeah. Um, this is Katina. Yeah, this is Katina. I'll, I'll move it and um, one second I can read the recommendation. Okay. Anybody so second? Katina's making the motion and she's going to read the motion out loud second. and then we'll second. have a second. second. Hmm. Go ahead, Katina. Okay. Um, it is recommended that the Wyndham Board of Education direct the administration to implement an in-person learning program without a full remote learning option for the 2021-2022 school year, unless required by the state of Connecticut or if deemed necessary by the Wyndham Board of Education. So, and Ilda seconded that? All of what she said. Okay. So the additional word there is full. Oh. Um, without a full remote learning option. And um, this, is there any discussion or explanation of this that's needed? Dr. Youngberg, are you going to say something? Sure. Um, there are many local boards making a similar recommendation and voting on a similar uh, piece since the state put out the interim guidance. Um, the, the word full has been placed in there to make sure that we're talking about the fact that we're not offering a full remote learning option next school year, but we still want the ability to potentially use technology and remote learning for temporary situations like snow days or quarantines or other emergencies, but we will not be offering a full remote learning option. So that's the difference. That's why we put in the word full. Any questions, comments from the board? This is Tracy. Go ahead. I would just like to encourage Dr. Youngberg um, to give them one or two snow days if we possibly can. I can remember being a child and so enjoying getting up in the morning. I and mean, it was a very long time ago, you know, when we wrote on tap, but not as long as Mark, that's okay. Um, but it was a very long time ago. And I just remember waking up in the morning and not having to go to school and having that precious feeling. And so I'm not saying that we eliminate it completely, but just maybe one or two a year or something like that, just to give them that 
kind of refreshed childhood feeling. We so, take away from them. So Trace, totally agree with you. Um, not only do I agree with snow days in terms of kids development, but sometimes the adults just need them too, honestly and truly. So that's what I, we did that this year and I would continue to do that. I all about that. And I, I too remember snow days being a really exciting thing. So I'm with you. Yeah. Thank you. That. We had to have three feet of snow before we had a snow day. That's what I remember. That's because you had to walk both ways. Well, back in the day, Mark, we did get three feet of snow. That's so. right. That's right. As long as the dog was healthy, you went to school. <laughs> uh, are there any other comments on this motion or questions? Nope. <clears throat> okay. Um, so we'll take a roll call vote. Janet, please. Dr. Kavan Owen. Aye. Mm. Mr. Doyle. Mark, you're up. I said aye. Oh, Did sorry. You know? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I Dr. Hear. Gallucci. Aye. Dr. Gomez. Aye. Ms. Haney. Mm. Aye. Ms. Ide. Aye. Ms. Lambert. Aye. Mr. O'Neill. Aye. Ms. Ray. Aye. Thank you. So motion carries. Um, thank you. And the last item on the agenda today is public comment. Is there anybody who would like to speak with public com during public comment? Please put your name in the chat. Seeing none, I'm not here. Any, Mark, yes. I'm, well, it's, it's more of a future agenda item, if you will, but I'll put it on in the public comment section. Uh, I'm just wondering if, at, at, in a future meeting, if uh, Dr. Youngberg can give us an idea of how many seniors are or are not graduating due to the uh, COVID problems or lack of credit. I'm just curious how it's impacted our graduating class. I don't need the answer tonight, but at some point in the future. Thank you. So noted. I see Dr. Youngberg nodding her head. Um, we can actually absolutely get you that information for the next board meeting. And I know Wyndham High School teachers are actually working hard now to offer uh, tutoring services to try to get the kids that are real close uh, across the finish line. So we'll we'll get you this specific data for the next board meeting. Uh, in the same vein, I would like to add um, how how is attendance in general and um, are there how, how many reports for um, to the Department of Children and Families if, you know, have we found families um, that were missing also? See, three different things. Okay, I'll give you an update on attendance. I can tell you that since we came back full in person five days, we have seen an increase in, uh, in, attend in student attendance, which is really exciting news, but we'll give you an update. Thank you. Okay. So noted. Anything else? Any comments? Okay. Hearing and seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.44. I move, we move. Second. Motion been made and seconded. We're adjourning at 7.44. Impressive. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Have a good Bye. night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night. Everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.